Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, a textbook extravaganza Apple wants you to learn. Plus, iPad 3 rumors on live desktop and reminder syncing. All that and hot cat butt. Yeah, you heard me right on iPad today. iPad Today is brought to you by Ford, featuring all electric and hybrid electric technologies. Learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. And by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With a new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at Slingbox.com slash twit. Wendy in here. Wow. Hello there. Oh, hi, Leo. Welcome back from CES. We survived. That was it fun. It was. It was a really fun show. If, it, if you haven't caught it yet, Leo and I walked around the eye lounge for the better part of two hours. Wow. Seeing as much as we could see and really only covered a portion of the ground. It's huge in there. As we were walking away, the cameras had stopped. The lights were off. My makeup had run. <laughs> and as we were walking away, I said... Oh. Oh, we missed that. I can't remember what it was, but it was something cool. It was something cool. And and so it, there, it, it was 28,000 so square feet. Like that. But I do feel like, surprisingly, we got most of the really interesting stuff and some not so interesting stuff. Well, that's the beauty of CES is that there are diamonds, diamonds. in the rough. Yeah. And then there are a lot of cubic zirconia. So this is something, actually, somebody came up to me and uh, gave me from a company called Hybit, or HiBT. Did they came up to you at CES? Yeah. This is really nice. It looks like a dodo case. It does. It's wood. Mm -hmm. uh, handcrafted wood with uh, appropriate uh, openings for various things, including, which the Dodo case didn't have because it didn't have to, a camera hole. And then it opens up and it has a secure holder. I uh, actually really like it. I won't put my iPad in it right now, but I, I really like it for that. Um, it does the it does the uh, kind of moleskine kind of thing. I mean, it's, it seems to which holds me it very secure. like a Dodo case. Knockoff? Well, I, or... A, Does your you Dodo know, case do this? And you tell me because I don't know. Because uh, you liked the Dodo case a lot. Very much, very much. Um, but does it do the, uh, the the stand thing like that? Ooh, that's cool. Now, I haven't used a Dodo case in a while because I just had uh, one for my first-gen iPad uh, that was too big for the right. iPad 2, so it has been retired. I'm not sure if Dodo cases do this now, but I know mine didn't. So yeah. that's pretty cool. And, it, and if you do it this way, then you have uh -huh. that kind of uh, thing. For writing. Yeah. It's good for writing so, on tabletop. I, I just, it's a very secure case. It's nice wooden frame, which means it's going to protect it pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very much like the Dodo case. I, I, I agree. Um, anyway, but, but this good. was nice. They, they put, uh, they embossed, uh, you can't see it there. If I put it over here, you could probably see it a little bit better. They embossed a uh, twit on it, so it's very pretty. Oh, that's awesome. You know yeah. what that's also good for? Uh, school kids who are now carrying around iPads who don't want other kids to jack their iPads. You know why they're carrying around iPads? Because it's that? a lot lighter than that big old textbook uh, backpack they've been carrying. This was a big day. Today was the day Apple announced its education initiative. What did you think? Well, I, I don't... Okay, so on one hand, I feel like we knew pretty much going in that it was going to be about the textbook market right. and Apple trying to figure out how to bring things digital and also get a cut from books and make it more fun and interactive for uh, students and, and uh, teachers and professors to use the, the App Store ecosystem. That said, there was more to it than I thought that there'd be. It was a great announcement. There were three things. A new iBooks, iBooks 2, that will have a textbook section. And these new textbooks will have multimedia. They'll be very rich. They'll have interactive video, audio, graphics. They also announced an authoring tool that will be on the Macintosh. It's in the App Store. right. Both of these are in the App Store right now. Uh, that lets you make these. They call it iBooks Author. And I think that tool is spectacular. You can embed Keynote presentations in so you really that that means you have all the interactivity that keynote can offer you can embed videos in it it's a beautiful authoring tool right now it only works with the iBook store that's one big question mark wouldn't it be nice if we could make our own ebooks uh, that would be publishable on other platforms but it does have a publish button that publishes right to iTunes so it means you or I could do a, a, a 
It doesn't have to be a textbook. I was thinking this would be a great opportunity to do a book on how we built the brick house, yeah. including video, graphics, interviews, and text, something was, like that. I was also thinking for somebody who had, oh, I don't know, I don't know, enough time to put together a really interesting resume or CV or something that I could give you as a book that's oh, sort of imagine. like my entire career with imagine. pictures and video and stories. Not that everybody wants to do that, but there are, if you think big, there are a lot of uses for something like this. And I mean, if it's as far as publishing your own uh, book, if it's as simple as something like iWeb used to be, I know iWeb... It looks that simple, I yeah, have to say. I mean, iWeb tended to, all the people's uh, websites tended to sort of look the same. Right. But when you're talking about something like a book that's just full of information, I found iWeb very easy to use back in the day. So. They don't have, I mean, they only have like six templates, so it's not like they do have a lot of different looks. Uh, then the third announcement, which I think might go underreported, is that they are going to expand the capabilities of iTunes U. Mm -hmm. I think iTunes U is overlooked often anyway. I try to tell everybody about it. It's amazing. All these universities that have uh, courseware, MIT, Stanford, Duke, uh, uh, open University online that you can get for free, including lectures. I think and a lot of the UC schools are using it too. Exactly. And now they'll be able to put syllabi in there, uh, oh. tests, all sorts of stuff. And they're extending it to K through 12. So um, this is fantastic. I think this is a, a, a this might be even more important than the textbooks. This is a way for you to package up a course and give it away for free. If you're if you're somebody who wants to get an education and you're not so worried about going to some Ivy Hall uh, building, you could learn anything. Look at physics, uh, programming. I mean, just it's amazing. Foreign languages, too. I mean, think about something Incredible. like that. There, there are all sorts of things that you want to learn that you might not associate with going to school that could be really helpful. You know, Leo, I never paid much attention to iTunes U because I'm not in college anymore, and I figured it was a very much like a university thing. And then you told me, oh, no, I use it all the time. I'm learning how to program. I'm buying books philosophy. for... Philosophy? Yeah, just I'm taking a, a course knowledge. in uh, the, uh, a philosophy course called Death. Oh, <laughs> that's great. You just From Yale. To know more about that. It's a great Yale lecture, and it's just his lectures. I can't. It's like twenty-two lectures in the philosophy, and it's fantastic. So uh, it doesn't have to be, f you know, for a college kid. It could be for anybody who kind of likes, wants to expand their horizons. And now with these new tools, uh, it'll really they'll, it'll incense somebody from just saying, here, let's have... A lot of the colleges, frankly, are doing this. Here's our videos of all our lectures. There you go. But now to include the lecture notes, the syllabus, the uh, uh, maybe even tests, mm -hmm. so that it really becomes a full, a full course. Oh, yeah, you can fantastic. have multiple choice questions mm -hmm. where you, you, can, you can see the answer in line by just, you know, clicking the right thing. You can make flashcards... So iTunes U, just for anybody who's like, gosh, how, how do I get all this stuff, or how do I how do how do I access everything? iTunes U is actually a new app. Um, I've downloaded it, and oh, I didn't know that. Let's let's yeah, see. Yeah, so it, it's a it's a brand new app that looks a lot like an app store. So it's no, it used to be in iTunes, but now it's its own standalone. Exactly, you can still access it from within iTunes, but um, it's the iTunes U catalog. Now, if you go into your iTunes U library, it looks a lot like the iBooks app. And it actually looks a lot like the newsstand app, too. I wish they sort of all looked different yeah. because now I've got well, three apps that look uh, similar. No, Sarah, I beg to differ. That's mahogany. Well, you're right, Leo. <laughs> Can't you tell? If that's the only... The other is Naughty Pine. <laughs> so if I was to, I don't know, want to brush up in trigonometry, for example, um, I go ahead and click into uh, this textbook. You can read a little bit more about it. It's got not that many ratings, but the ones that it has are good. Um, subscribe for free? Really? Well, that's interesting. Almost all this stuff is free. That's, that's great. the beauty of this Gosh. is that they these you know I, you know I worked for, for a little bit on a committee uh, at my alma mater, uh, Yale University, and we were t the president of Yale said to the committee members, "Don't think of this as a profit center for Yale. It is in our mission to gather the world's knowledge and share it." with everybody. We're not going to try to charge for this. We're not going to try to make money for this. Mm -hmm. This is a way of fulfilling our mission to share the world's knowledge. And so Apple's given us these great tools to do it. Now, I got to underscore that the negative is you, it's within Apple's ecosystem. And and it's clear. Look, Apple look Apple's a business. Their their point is to sell iPads. So you have to you do this on a Macintosh. Mm -hmm. You can only sell it in the iBook store or on iTunes U. There's no I way to export it, it out. Frankly, and it's not and it, the Apple and it runs way. On the, no, so but they, I don't think that that's the end of the world. But it's just something to be aware of. There are EPUB tools from other companies that mm -hmm. maybe make this kind of thing possible uh, without 
locking you into Apple. But of course, Apple's going to make it as beautiful and easy and simple as, as they do with everything else. And I, you know, I'm for one, I'm not unhappy about that. I think that you just have to be aware of it. This is this is going to be amazing what we're going to be able to see if here. If you've got an iPad, then the I mean, the only thing I guess you could get bristly over is the fact that they're probably taking 30 percent sure if you charge of all sales they didn't actually say that in their announcement today but it's implied i guess unless we hear differently well, the other thing that was encouraging to me and i hope that this is a trend is that the textbooks that i saw on the new ibook store are much less expensive than the physical textbooks you know uh, a, high or less. Yeah, a high school or college textbook is 10 times that. Now, of course, they have a resale value. So one of the reasons textbook companies might like this and might charge less is because there's some there's no resale value. You buy it and you keep it as yours, right? But you can't sell it again. That's not true of textbooks, real textbooks. Um, we'll see. If I, I'd be surprised if the price is ends up being is it does it have to be fourteen ninety nine? Fourteen ninety nine or less. Really? Uh, for now anyway. Wow. Um the, the That's remarkable. One of the publishers, I, I guess to um as someone in the media after the announcement said they're calling it pilot pricing. Yeah. Which said ooh. Uh, but then good. um someone from Apple said, No no no, that's the price. That is the price. So it remains to be seen if that's going to be the price forever or not. Uh iBooks, which is something that you already have on your iPad if if you, you just updated. Yeah, exactly. As long as it's updated. iBooks is as it was before, except that now when you go to the store, you just have a textbook area um, that will add that will be added to your uh, bookcase. Um, I downloaded Life on Earth. Now, but this is just the first couple of chapters. Took a long time, didn't it? These things are huge. Yeah, they're big. There's a lot of video in there. This particular book, and maybe it's just because they want me to get interested in the textbooks, was free. Although yeah. you can get a sample, and they're going to be That's doing that. That's what they said. Samples for, for everything. Going forward, yep. Which is... If only apps had things like that. I'd love to sample an app before I pay $15 for something that I really don't need. And then finally, uh, the uh, iBook authoring. Love uh, this program. Is, I played uh, with this. It's really remarkable. Did you? Yeah. So I installed it. Let's, let's, let's just launch it and take a look at uh, Chad, this is on my Mac, if you can pull that up. Uh, all right. So there's the six templates. Okay. Uh, doesn't mean you have to make an astronomy book with contemporary. That's just yeah, a contemporary I, style, I chose obviously. classic, for right, example. Right. Go ahead and choose this. Now, what I'm not clear about is can you charge nothing for this book? In other words, could I make a book about the making of the Twit Brickhouse that I gave away? I don't see why not. Well, it's, why, I guess it's up mean, to Apple. Well, why would... why? Hmm. I yeah. don't know. They, they I mean, what if you charged one cent? Maybe. Are they going to take they a have They could take one of third a of a cent if they want. <laughs> they uh, they uh, did get Pearson... Uh, uh, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt and uh, what was the third? I can't remember. Uh, uh, McGraw Hill. All yes. the big three textbook publishers are in this. That's ninety nine percent of all textbooks. Apparently, on average, these textbook publishers will sell books to a school, not to an individual teacher, to a school. Oh. So their relationship is with a with a district of some kind, and the books are give or take about five years cycles. Well, that's another so thing I noticed. So what they lose. Uh, they'll gain because you don't have those five right. years of kids being cycled through. It's every single kid potentially right. buying this fifteen dollar book. And you can update these books uh, instantly, mm -hmm. I would imagine. So that's I'll be curious to how quickly these are updated. Now, one thing I, I did uh, uh, note here's a, by the way, this is I don't know if you downloaded a math book, but I wanted to see how they would treat math. So this is the Algebra One book, and what they have is this review thing. Now I don't know if this oh, it's awfully bright. I feel bad now. Can you see it? Uh, I would love it if you actually had to type something in here, but in fact, when you tap it, they just kind of start to fill it in for you. So there's some interactivity, but it's not the student doing the work here. It's uh, You're just looking at the example. If I could just be negative Nancy for a second, and particularly when it comes to math, because I took a lot of math in college, uh, there's something about learning by writing, and particularly when it comes to equations and numbers, like working it out, that when I see stuff like that, well, I you think, would still yeah, have I don't to do know it. about I agree. the whole learning I process. I agree, and you would, you would still have to do that. But remember, the textbook didn't make you write. So this is a little bit farther along than the textbook anyway, right? I guess so. It also has a glossary. I mean, that's one of the other things that I really think is cool. Uh, you can take a concept, a mathematical concept, like slope-intercept form. Let's go back to there. Slope in, oh, hey, hey. Slope intercept form, 
and I will get the glossary definition of it. This is something that if you have a real textbook, I've spent a lot of time going through the textbooks trying to find the information. This is great that this is available. It's alive. And it's right there. I think that's just fantastic. So these are iBooks textbooks, iBooks author, and iTunes U. By the way, iBooks author, um, even though it's it's only available via the Mac Store, is free. Right. So that's amazing too. They no can charge for this. No reason not to play around with it. They and charge see if for GarageBand. There's no reason. That, now the thing I was going to say is, uh, it, as, at least as far as I could tell in the textbook store, all of these were not state specific versions. Now one of the real costs of textbooks are that you have to create a version for the Texas School Board, the California School Board. Each has its own standards. You have to go buy through the school board. They have to approve it. That's what makes one of the things textbook publishers say makes them so expensive. Mm -hmm. What they've done here, and you'll see in almost every case, it's the Common Core Edition. It means it's the basic non-state specific edition. That means for this, this book probably wouldn't be approved for use in a California public school, a Texas public school, because they don't fulfill the requirements of that state. So I'm not sure how they're going to handle that. Um, I have a feeling that this is how McGraw-Hill is kind of preserving a little bit of its market, saying, well, well, sure, $14 uh, for the Common Core edition, no problem. I'd love to know what Texas and California need differently when it comes to algebra. Oh, they do, though, and that's what's really frustrating. <laughs> I, I swear, that's that what they do. That seven is not how we remember it. <sighs> that's not Texan history. But I say, I think for fourteen ninety nine for a textbook that usually costs $125, that's fantastic. This is, it's, it's the sort of thing where you go textbooks. Oh, okay, well, you know, it's gonna, that's going to apply to a lot no, this is a of breakthrough. kids. This is a breakthrough. Of course, the question that a, that a lot of people are raising is, <laughs> okay, well, this is, seems great for college, no brainer. Now when we're going into high school and K through 12, well, K through 8, um, you know, who are the schools? Who are who are the all of the kids who can't afford iPads now who are going to be able to take right. advantage of this? And uh, I was a little disappointed. They mentioned this in the Verge uh, live blog as well. No mention of making iPads available to schools, mm -hmm. having a discount program, having a education program for iPads. They do have a bulk discount program and a school so discount do. program, but it's nothing on top of what any school would already be familiar with. Right. And obviously it's not good for some schools or more kids would have iPads or at least access to them this, on a daily basis. This, it makes perfect sense. This sells iPads. It makes the iPad a much more desirable product. Mm -hmm. It puts the iPad in a lot of schools. And imagine if you're a third grader and all your textbooks from third grade through college have been on an iPad. When you get out of college, are you going to buy an iPad? Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very good. I think it's, and maybe we'll, you'll have a special feeling in your heart for Apple. It's one of the reasons Apple put all those apps. Did you have Apple twos when you were in school? Oh, yeah. I bet you did. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's well. all we had in school. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. In and fact, my, I remember my, uh, my family's first computer, it was an IBM, was sort of different and exotic because I only had access to Apple computers. Right. That's, which is very I would love to backward. see Amazon or somebody else respond to this um, with uh, uh, maybe something similar. Problem is, you, you, know, you could do it on the Fire, but on an ebook reader, uh, on the it's AM, more limiting. You're not going to have the multimedia that yeah. you have here. And the multimedia is great on these. Well, this is the funny thing to remember. It's like, ooh, now you've got this textbook that's so much lighter and digital. It's like, that's in addition to all the other things that the iPad does. <laughs> it's not just a textbook. It's pretty amazing. It's so many things. Yeah. Yes. It's almost mind boggling. Yeah. We should mention that uh, two companies that we've talked about in the past, Inkling and No, as in K N O, are two companies that. They're not the only two companies who have been experimenting with textbooks on the iPad, but they're certainly the two best known. I, it, it depend, depending on who you talk to, people say, ooh, I want, wouldn't want to be one of them right now. And the, or, or other people say, well... I don't think it's bad for them. Because you're just bringing uh, right. a general you're put, If you put iPads in idea. people's hands and they're buying textbooks, I think that uh, these other textbook companies will, mm -hmm. do, will have a real opportunity as well. I downloaded a, um, a book about DSLR photography via Inkling. Now, Inkling is a little bit interesting because you actually have to buy the book uh, from Inkling's website. But as long as you're logged in on Inkling uh, using the same email address as you're logged in on your iPad, it will download automatically. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, so it's you can't actually do That way this. Apple doesn't get its 30%, uh, right? Yeah, there's no yeah. in-app purchase with Inkling, but it was fairly easy to do. I downloaded a, a relatively um, cheap book. It was about $10. Um, and this is actually something where it's like, oh, yeah, I, I could... I could I could really use this knowledge um, with my DSLR stuff because it's pretty limited. Um, and as you can see, there's this is a you know it's a how-to book, um, and there's all sorts of tutorials, um, 
uh, examples, videos that you can play that, you know, the, the people who wrote the book tell you, oh, you know, this is the best way to shoot Central Park in the summer, or whatever she's about to say. Um, so that's pretty cool. I will say that $10 is the cheapest by far that I found anything at Inkling. Not only is Inkling limited, but a lot of their books, I went straight to the foreign language section. It's like they have a Spanish book for $150, so I'm not going to buy that today. So... It, there, there's some kind of crazy pricing that they're going to have to work out if people associate Apple with the $15 book and then they see something for $150 right. at Inkling. Remember also that Inkling was trying to duplicate one of these. Was it Inkling or k and Maybe it was k and was trying to duplicate the textbook experience down to the page number because they said, here's the problem. You have some kids in school that have paper books and some have a mm -hmm. digital book. And what if the teacher says goes to page 140 it's different on the digital book. Apple responded to that. They said, no, page 140 on our uh, e-books is the same I think uh, you're as it is probably on a paper book. talking about K&O because this They really is, look more like real books, yeah, right? Yeah. They, they were trying to duplicate the book experience. In fact, to the point where, let's see if I can go, if I can go, I'm still yeah. trying to figure out this. It's uh, almost bland, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. That's, a, that's like the pages of the book. If I go to... And that's the idea, of course. Yeah. They want to give uh, all students the same experience. If you go to the introduction, it's like, I mean, you're, you're scrolling yeah. through the book yeah. as it would be, right. you know. So it's almost of, like a PDF. <laughs> some of the, exactly. Some of the pages say, this page well, left intentionally that, blank. Here's the E.O. Wilson uh, book that the, is free for download on the Apple Store. So it's, a, it's actually a really beautiful uh, bio uh, textbook with great images and things like interactivity contrast what you just saw with this so the students looking at global temperature you're talking about global warming and you have this interactive graph that shows how the temperature average temperature has risen over the years that is so much more uh, powerful I think mm -hmm. and, and a great way to bring this stuff to life lots of video in here too um, some great stuff here's uh, EO Wilson himself talking about the so this is in the textbook you know uh, uh, so i think a slavish uh recreation of a paper book is probably not the way to go uh when you have something uh like this i mean this is this is really really fantastic especially for the think? younger kids do this is probably the the type of learning that makes the most sense to them right you don't you, you just don't have to read uh, a, a textbook with a few pictures and, you know, they're in color if you're lucky type of this a thing anymore. This book comes alive. Yeah. Especially visual learners and, yeah, you get, you know, you got touching stuff. Uh, I, 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 you know, it's interactive. Quizzes can be in here. There's a lot of capabilities. And, you know, these are early, this is early days. I think uh, the tool will uh, prove itself in time. And look, I mean, I just, uh, what does Boreal mean? I just double click it and I can get a definition pop up. That's fantastic, right? I did read on TechCrunch earlier this week that no, K-N-O, how do you say it? Is it K-N-O know. or no? I think no. it's no as in But knowledge. no, if you say no, it's not, it's not good. Well, because I have to say Maybe no with a K. Maybe you should say no. K-N-O. 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 I don't know. No, that's probably what it is. No, but I think uh, they had, they, they pushed out an update. Um, I actually wasn't able to find it in the C++ book that I downloaded, but maybe it's because I'm just on a 15-day trial. Are you studying C++? Well, I'm, uh, it's just a trial. I thought it'd kind of be fun. I have all these hobbies. I don't know what I'm going to do with all of them. I'm very unorganized. I just like, to, same, I like, just like to learn stuff for no reason. Me too. You know, Me why too. not? It's just like, what, what am I going to lose out uh, by, by being smarter? But, uh, but uh, what No has done is one, one of the features that they uh, rolled out earlier in the week, and probably because they either knew or at least suspected that Apple would come out with the same feature, is flashcards, creating flashcards oh. based on keywords. Oh, uh, and sure enough, Apple did. In fact, not only that, on your notes too. So as mm -hmm. you use the highlighter on your books uh, or you add notes, it will turn them into flashcards. So this, to me, this was one of the most revolutionary things. You know, your finger becomes the highlighter, which I think is fantastic. I'm not sure exactly how to do that. Uh, but they said your finger, do you have to, how do I do it? Well, you, you, you click and hold. Click and hold? Yeah. Oh. There you go. Ah. Oh, you see, you're smart. You're so now, as I highlight, so I, right. when you read a book like this, um, this is a normal thing to do, although usually you have to use a pen, right? Yeah. You highlight the things you care about. But then, afterwards, you're going to get a flashcard set that will help you study the book based on what you mm -hmm. underlined. Yep. I so mean, that's wonderful. I know. I love, I actually think flashcard learning is really fun because it's like a test. I wish we'd had this. I mean, I think kids are have the opportunity to learn 
so much faster I'm here jealous. as a result of it. Yeah. So here's the stuff I underlined. It shows it shows where it is. It shows what chapters it, it's in. Uh, I could turn it into study cards now. So yeah, these are the now cards. I just randomly underline stuff. But <laughs> come on, dudes! Do you see how easy that was? That was so easy, dudes. Dude. Uh, just I Quiz think it's a revolution. Yourself. Yeah, it's a. Re I wish we had this now for all the textbooks my kids use. It's tr it's not that not that anybody's keeping us from reading as many textbooks as possible, but there is sort of a weird envy I have. Like, I'm gosh, so I really jealous. wish I was going into high school right about now I'm so because jealous. the way kids are going to learn yeah. in just a few years, it's just not going to look anything like it looks right. even yesterday. Look and at this. So, it's tundra. Exciting. What is tundra? I don't know. I don't know. It is a northern biome, and so, oh, so Henry right. had to study this. This is all automatic. Isn't that great? And then these are the ones that I created. They're mixed in. You can also share these, by the way, mm -hmm. with your with your uh, other study mates. Um, you can email them out. Uh, I'll just email them all, so I can send you. Hey, Sarah, here's my notes. Love that. I love that too. You know. I, and I hope that, well, it's hard to say how Apple will want to integrate with social networks because they can be very finicky, but No is the only app that I know of so far that will let you not only send to Dropbox, oh, that's uh, if nice. you want to send portions clips? of a book, okay. yeah, clips to Dropbox, and also um, share with friends on Facebook and Twitter, and you think, well, what? <laughs> Is that really what you want to be sharing on Facebook and Twitter? Well, if you're in school and most of your friends are also in school, then a lot of your social activity might be based around it. coursework. Everybody, I want you to start tweeting your, your coursework. <laughs> I love that idea. What are you reading? <laughs> oh, it's, it's great for the new Facebook. Um, it was the Facebook, best of times. Uh, what, it was what, the worst of What do they dot, calling dot, it? Dot. The new Facebook activity that There's whole a, thing that they announced the, last week. The graph? Week. The social Yeah, well, the graph. you know, that's how you're pulling in all of your, I'm reading this textbook right now. Leo is reading about biology. <sighs> Friction-free sharing. So that's uh, the big announcement from this morning. Uh, took place in New York in, uh, at the Guggenheim Museum, actually. And it was very exciting. If you want to actually see the keynote, it's up on Apple's website. Um, but we gave you the gist just now. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's a mm -hmm. pretty good announcement. Pretty well solid. worth uh, download. Well, you can watch the event, but well worth downloading. Uh, update your iBooks to iBooks 2. Mm -hmm. If you have a Macintosh, go to the App Store. It's free to download the author program. Yeah, and iTunes U free app as well. And get those and, and play with them. Uh, I think you'll find there's a, a wealth of stuff there, even if you're not a student. We're students, all of us, of life. Absolutely. And if, you, uh, if you're confused about anything that we mentioned or you want quick app links, don't worry. They will all be on our website. Twit.tv slash IPT is our general website. And click into whatever episode you want for all of our show notes as well. Hey, this is a portion of iPad today is brought to you by our friends at Ford, uh, makers of a brand new line of all electric and hybrid electric vehicles. In fact, ultimately, Ford's plan is to make every car available in all possible configurations, diesel, petrol, or gasoline, uh, electric, plug-in, hybrid, and hybrid. And uh, you right now, the 2012 Ford Focus Electric, you can get the Ford Focus in a gas model. Overseas, you can get it in a diesel model uh, as well. They have a uh, uh, hybrid version, and the plug-in hybrid's coming. I can't wait to get it. And, of course, the all-electric version. You can, I'm on the waiting list for that. You can get on the waiting list right now. should be out any day now, the 2012 Ford Focus Electric. Some of the features they're putting into these new uh, uh, hybrid, hybrid electric and electric cars uh, are regenerative braking systems so that instead of, you know, the heat generated from braking being lost as energy into the air, uh, it gets back into your battery. It uses, they use it to recharge your battery. 90% of the kinetic energy in braking is saved uh, into... 90% into the uh, battery. They uh, work with your smart devices, your phones, your iPads, uh, with apps, special apps that allow you to manage the recharge process, remotely control vehicle charging and preconditioning, monitor the battery, maximize energy efficiency in the car itself. The GPS now has shortest route, fastest route, and most eco-friendly route, so you can save on fuel. Um, this is now you start to see the whole strategy of Sync and My Ford Touch, the 21st century vehicle, come together with vehicles optimized for electrified uh, uh, engines. Fuel lever, lever, level, uh, battery power level, average and instantaneous mile per gallon, all there on that app or on the screen in front of you. Um, just incredible stuff they're doing. Here's what you do. Go to a Ford.com slash technology. They've got videos and all this stuff. They'll show you the new 2012 Ford Focus Electric, how the electric uh, engine works. Th charges in three to four hours. 
if you get the Leviton charging station, the 240 volt home charging station, it'll also charge on a regular 100, 120 volt circuit, but not as fast. It's got a 100% electric, uh, so there's no emissions of any kind, CO or CO2. Uh, great uh, battery technologies. You don't have to worry about conditioning the battery or topping off. Look at all this stuff. This is great. I, it's available for reservations now, the 2012 Ford Focus Electric. Next fall, the 2013 Ford C-Max Energy Plug-In Hybrid is uh, coming to a Ford dealer near you. Drive one today. And uh, make sure you visit Ford.com slash technology. They truly are a 21st century car company. They're at the Ford front. Oh, I like oh, that. Oh, it sounded so much better in my head. <laughs> the Ford front. Yikes. They're on the Ford front. So, Leo, what do you think about, as if an education event isn't enough, what do you think about these iPad 3 rumors that have begun to swirl around the blogosphere and beyond? You know, it's funny uh, that you should mention that, because on a Mac Break Weekly, I polled the panel. We had Don McAllister, Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay, and I said, well, here's what they're saying. What do you think? They all agreed that we probably would see a retina display in the mm -hmm. iPad 3. We're mm -hmm. thinking March time frame. So that's a much higher resolution display. There, these rumors come from the suppliers who are selling Apple these displays right now. So right. this seems likely. They also agreed that they would have 4G. They'd be LTE both on Verizon and AT&T. Um, Verizon, you know, said at CES, we aren't going to sell any more devices that aren't LTE. And people read into that as new iPhones, going to have LTE, so. iPad. If that's I think that's true, a fair read into it. Verizon's kind of on my crap list right now, but that's a different story. Yeah, they I they overcharge use you for your data in Paris, I know. Yeah, Terrible. Well, it was Barcelona, actually. I oh, it was owe, Barcelona. Right now, I owe them $1,000, according to them. According they to did, me, I owe them zero. Same thing happened with me with AT&T in China. And a part of it is because, were you using the iPhone's usage? Sure was. What else would I use? Uh, well, that's what I used, too. And uh, AT&T said, well, if, well, before I left, they said, use that. When I came back, they said, oh, you should have used the uh, AT&T app. Is there a Verizon app on your phone? If there is, no one's ever told me about it. I've never thought to look. The, I but, think but in knowing their defense, that... I'm going to say this in their defense. All right. um, I don't think it's enough of a defense. But in their defense, what happens with uh, data roaming is that they don't know what it's going to cost until they get the bill from the provider. They don't know how much you've used. So they work off the bill from your provider. The iPhone's just looking at how many bytes are coming in and out. Mm -hmm. If there's a discrepancy, who are they going to use? They're not going to use the iPhone's account. Right. They're going to use the bill. But but I do believe you can fight it. I did with my with AT&T, and I didn't get it all removed, but I got, a lot, I got a lot of it removed. Well, I will do whatever I can, because... Yeah, That's we, a lot of money. Who's got that kind of money to just say, okay, well, uh, we both disagree, so I'll just go with right. what you guys say. It's Was there a significant difference between what your phone said and what they said? They said I went over 50 or so megabytes. Right. And that's like 20 something dollars per megabyte. <gasps> that's why it's so expensive. <sighs> I said, no, I was I was watching it and right. I turned off my data towards the end of my vacation, but in right. order to not you have You used up what you bought. I had a data plan. And, and you turned it off. That's what I did in China. And uh, and uh, it's almost like there's this lag between the time you turn it off and then stuff still comes in, still comes in. Well, and that may be what's going on. There's kind of a lag between the accounting. I don't know how it works. I don't know. I, so I, I owe them another phone call. I'm going to try to be less upset uh, the next time I yeah, talk I to you. that supervisor. I don't blame you. One cotton picking. But nevertheless. Nevertheless. Uh, LTE. Retina display, LTE. AT&T and Verizon can both handle LTE in my yep. neighborhood. Oh, uh, you're lucky. Yeah, well, we AT&T, not that long ago, wasn't it? Oh, that's it? great. So, yeah, it's a good thing. And they say it'll be a little bit thicker to accommodate a bigger battery. And this is the rumor I like the most, but I think is the least likely, 20 hours battery life. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if they can, they can stuff LTE in there. And still, I mean, I think the bigger battery means. I think means the larger means that they, they can time. keep it as right. is so that people right. aren't disappointed. Like, hey, my iPad used to last a few days and now right. it only lasts one. I, I don't really right. see it increasing. And if it increases, not by much. But I like the idea. I like the idea yeah. faster. So uh, that was the, the consensus of the panel was that LTE and uh, Retina Display were on the way for iPad 3. Oh, and I think this is true. They'll keep the iPad 2, just as they kept the iPhone 3GS, and continue to sell it at a lower price. So this is something that goes back to our education conversation. If the iPad 2 gets cut a little bit in price, it might be more attractive, especially in bulk, right. for educational institutions. Exactly. They're getting pressure from the Kindle Fire. Even now, Absolutely. Android. there are a number of Android tablets that are 349 So it makes sense to maybe 
have a $350 iPad 2 and a $500 iPad 3. So now the question is, when do we get them? Where's my iPad 3? March is what uh, the rumors say. This is officially the point where if someone says, should I wait? I say yes. I guess we're close enough now. We're close enough. Yeah. Unless it's a life or death situation. You we got it, iPad. March. You should wait. Do you remember it we was were at South, South by. by Southwest, and they had a pop-up store yep. in Austin, the store they built yep. just for the release of the iPad 2, and that was March, wasn't it? Mid-March. It was. It was, uh, oh, March second, 13th. second so, week or so yeah, of yeah. March. So if all goes well, it'll be thereabouts this year. So those, those are the iPad 3 rumors thus far. Um, they're not the last uh, before March, certainly. I wanted to talk about On Live Desktop, which went oh, live last this week. Sweet? Well, you know, Leo, I'd love to say that, except that um, there's something wrong with my email and password. I can't log in. Oh, well, I'll show you I went you to then. some forums, <laughs> and I seem to be the only person in the world who has this problem. I'm, I'm, I'm entering the right thing, because it won't let you go anywhere past uh, your your initial screen. So the deal is, you have to have an online on live account. You have to I, sign up for that on your desktop. Which I have. Once you've signed that up for on the desktop, and they showed us this at CES. This was their big announcement at CES. So first of all, let's 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 predicate this with on live. You may know as a gaming company. The idea being, you could play on an iPad or an inexpensive box high end games because. All of the rendering, all of the very CPU intensive stuff would be done on their servers way down the pipe, and they'd send you the images back. Uh, it's a little laggy, I have to say, as a gaming platform, but they're using the same technology now to give you Windows 7 on your iPad. You get two gigabytes of storage, it's free, and they even include, get this, Microsoft Office, the real full Office. This is Word on my iPad. Let me just type, this is Word. It's a little laggy, isn't it? Uh, that's because it's on live. Um, but I have to say... If that's the experience you want, to be able to have it for free... It's free. It's hard to complain. It's free, and I think you get used to this keyboard. Notice it is not, and this is so typical of Microsoft, this is Windows 7 Touch. Uh -huh. It's not the iPad. No. In <laughs> fact, so, things are in different places. Yeah, so it's going to throw you a little bit. This is Windows 7's uh, keyboard that we're looking at here, and I can close that out. But you really do have... Look at this. This is this is Word. You're in. Look, there's a start menu. You're, <laughs> this is a really weird experience. Isn't that great? It's a it's Windows 7 running on uh, the on live servers and then sent to your iPad. It's actually. I mean, when I say it's laggy, it's not that laggy. It's actually pretty darn usable. It's pretty yeah. Considering it's, it's, a, it's a lot of the familiar apps and and, right. and everything synced. So you know, if you're halfway through a game here on your on live desktop yeah, and then you go nice. back to your laptop later, yeah, it knows where you've left off. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah. yeah so that's really good. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. Should I add some color? Oh, why not? Oh, let's let's that's, put some pink. That's what people want to see. Yeah. Wow. Really, I have different really. brushes I could use. Very good yeah. art. Yeah. Very good art. I know, I'm telling you. So that's on live. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's free on, um, on an iPad. No idea why I can't get in. It's very frustrating. No, you having a, that's weird. I don't. Know. It's it's just a weird glitch. I I don't know. Um, but it's frustrating because uh, I wanted to show it off. But I'm glad that you had it running. We did get a duh tip. Um, oh no! Before we get to that, uh, we're going to ask Leo something. This one comes from Hello. Mark. Mark from DeForest, Wisconsin says, "I noticed something recently with my iPad. Facebook app has me a little confused." Um, has to do with active sessions. When logging into Facebook via the web, it shows a bunch of active sessions from my iPad. Which is active sessions, for anybody who doesn't know, if you go into account settings and then security, it will let you know what you've logged into right. from various machines. And if anything looks weird, you can cancel the session, update your password or whatever. It's just right. it's a security setting. He right. says, uh, this doesn't happen when I use Safari on my iPad, though. Just on the Facebook app on my iPad. Any idea what's going on? So I guess he, Mark is finding a discrepancy between looking at active sessions on Facebook uh, in his uh, uh, web browser, looking at Facebook active sessions via Safari on his iPad, and then looking at active sessions via his iPad app. I actually went through all of this, mm -hmm. and mine matched up. So I don't know, Mark. What the problem? Yeah, I'm looking here. Here's uh, These are the active sessions. I'm looking, and this is the Facebook app. I'm sorry, it's so uh, hard to read it's there. It's okay. But this is the Facebook app on uh, the iPad, not not Facebook on the web. And it shows me uh, the last times I've accessed Facebook. And here's, this is weird, Safari on Linux, Safari on Linux, Safari on Linux, uh, Chrome on OS X, Safari on Linux. 
I, I don't use Safari on Linux, so I'm thinking, and based on the on the on some of the logins, I'm thinking it's identifying uh, accesses through um, the. Uh, <laughs> Can't, I don't know what. It must be the iPad or the iPhone as Linux. You see a Mac OS X entry. So I think he's probably right. There is something strange going on in the way uh, active sessions are being identified. It looks like it's identifying logins through uh, iOS devices as Linux. I don't know why. Well, I had one from Southern California where it was accessed through a Firefox browser. I haven't used Firefox in a long time, so I was like, that's weird. It hmm. depends on the browser to identify itself properly. Right. Uh, um, I guess if you see something unusual, don't automatically think someone's hacking your account. Now, people but are saying, oh, the Linux, you're talking about Android, but I don't run Safari, and I don't know of any Safari that runs on Android. <laughs> so one of those two is wrong. Either I'm using Android and something else, or I'm using Safari and something else. Because um, Safari on Linux, uh, that's not possible as far as I know. Maybe I'm uh, wrong. But anyway, I, I know I'm not. So um, that you know, this is the, the the point of this is security and security alone. You'll find this all in your security tabs. For instance, here's the list of recognized devices, and you probably had this happen where it asks you to name a device when you log in or attach uh, a Facebook app oh, to yeah. a Facebook. And I've got a hundred. That's the that's the maximum. So you might want to go in and move them. What the whole, is, why do you have that many? Because <laughs> I give it a new name every time, I guess, or something. Why? It won't let me do it anymore. I, it says you've had to delete some of these. You can't have a hundred. Why don't so, you just? Every time it's the same, div like every Should time it asks me, I always say iPad 2, all in words. Yes, yeah, see, I just don't remember. Because that's what I'm using. I just don't remember. Well, I don't think you're using your active sessions correctly. You're just giving things <laughs> names. I am. Oh, no, let's call it Fred. So, so I guess that's my point is <laughs> this is a, this is not designed to be some something that any, this is for you. Yeah. To know who's active accessing your Facebook account and when. Mm -hmm. if, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. I mean, obviously, some of this does not make sense. Um, but I, I don't think that means there's anything to but worry about. But if you about. were paranoid or had good reason to believe that s something was going on, you can uh, disconnect an active session. That means like an active session just means something where so somehow a device is logged in to right. a Facebook account from Notice somewhere. Notice all of the. I have fourteen and active. Your password. I have fourteen active sessions. Yeah. What? Well, for you, it's probably about right. <laughs> I don't know what these things are. We got a duh tip from Jason, who has, th this is, you guys are good, a uh, duh tip for keywords. Take it away, Jason. Hey, Sarah and Leo, this is Jason from Santa Clarita, California. F and done in the chat room. F and done. I got kind of a duh tip for you. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Sarah showed how when you do a search in Safari on the iPad, it shows on this page as a place to look? Well, I noticed last week when I clicked on the search field and the keyboard popped up, at the top of the keyboard, there is a find on page field. Oh, that's nice. You type in yeah, your search that's new. I use that all the time. Page mm -hmm. Using the arrow buttons next to the input. Cool, field. yeah. It's similar to the next and previous from other word processor apps. You can move through the current page looking for the search word you typed in. Effing done, you're good. I know it's not an earth shattering find, but one I hadn't noticed before. I want to say thanks a lot for a great show, guys, and I hope to come by your studio sometime and see it in person. See you guys later. Ow! <laughs> That's so cool. It's a little counterintuitive because, because you, you, you have you, to first type in, t tap the Google search, yeah, and then you'll get the keyboard, which then has the find on page. But if for some it. reason I'm looking at this... I don't know, article about uh, Facebook's open graph. That's the term I was looking for earlier. And I think, like, weren't they talking about... Whoops, <laughs> I just did it wrong. Weren't they talking about Netflix? Yeah, so now it's like it, it helps Does you jump to there. certain yeah. keywords that, that you're looking for. I, I use this, uh, it's Command F, right? Re On, uh, right. And remember that we, uh, a few episodes ago, were showing you ways to add bookmarks to Safari. That was one of them, is a fine on page bookmark. Uh, I think this is an iOS 5 thing. You no longer need to uh, to add it after the fact. No. So thank you, Jason, uh, slash F and Dunn. That is a really good duct tip. I've never used it before, but it was right in front of us the whole time. Good news. Aaron from Maryland says, hey, Leo, guess what's back in the App Store? What? iFitness. Oh, wow. You're I kidding. iFitness is We were just back. talking about that. That's right. Um, I was looking for says, replacements. I think you'll find it interesting keeping with your resolutions following a week of traveling and CES and eating mm. out daily. We'll be watching. I'm so. going back on a diet. So iFitness HD. Yep. You know, I don't even know if they had a, before if they had an iPad. Now, I don't know if it's the same one either. I notice it's $1.99. So let's, let's, I'll, I'll well, buy there is it. Well, there is a version that's free. It does look the same. Yeah. 
It does. How interesting. I downloaded it. Um, this is, I, I think it's the same thing, Leo. I mean, you've got uh, your uh, dumbbell lateral raise. Uh, it's a little different looking. Is it? Yeah. I wonder if somebody just said, hmm, I'm going to create it and call it iFitness. And, well, I guess that's yeah. true. Uh, that's I possible, I can do that, too. by the way. Did you know I could do that? Um, I can do that, too, probably with a lot less weight. I could do that with gentleman. 100 pounds. With 100 pounds on each arm? No. Oh. Then you have some work to do. <laughs> so that's iFitness. So yay for yay. anybody who's looking for iFitness. It's back, baby. Uh, we got a voicemail from Katie in Cleveland. She has a question about our set. Hey, Sarah. I don't know if you've ever answered this question or not, but the stand that you're using to hold your Mac and your iPad, where can you get it from? What is it? It's very cool. Um, yeah. It's a gorgeous stand, and I think I'd use it all the time if I had it. So let me know. Thanks. Is this glass or plastic? It, mm, you know, it's plastic. It's plastic. Is okay. it? Yeah, it's, yeah plastic. it's plastic. It looks like glass. It's got this nice... You guys have... have we've, we have two of them, but Leo likes his custom stand that uh, one of our audience members but made But this, this is really designed so you could use an iPad and a laptop or a, a combination of things. In fact... Uh, and th Oh, by the way, Katie, to answer your question, yes, uh, we can tell you exactly where to go. Airdesks.com. I love so, this idea. So, plural, Airdesks. May I... You can also tilt this up. You can, yeah. Um, which and it's got little pegs here. So if you like to have, it's completely modular. This, this could all be much higher yeah. or lower depending on. You know, maybe if you, you want like to use to it as a stand. Type sideways or whatever, it'll hold standing. it. Yeah, so it's it's good. You can see right there. It's yeah. good for people who. <laughs> Their website. Don't be fooled by the website. The product's actually quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really terrible website. It's pretty bad. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Um, but yes, uh, Liz actually found us. When we were moving to our new brick house, we said we tried the a time. lot of different kinds and, of stands. And there's sometimes sometimes a stand looks so good until you're you've got we it in broke. front of you, and then you go, no. We broke one stand because you kept twisting it the wrong way. It's true; those didn't work very well. A little bit of user error there, but yes, uh, we like our air desks a lot. Um, I can vouch for them, um, and hopefully, Katie, uh, that's the information that you needed. We did, um, you know, Chad, I was going to play this voicemail, but in the interest of time, I'll just sort of sum it up. We got a lot of emails. Um, I had complained a few weeks ago that I loved reminders. It was one of my good New Year's resolutions to but. just be more organized, except that I could only sync my reminders between my iPad and my iPhone. And I have a trifecta of awesome here. And some, <laughs> many of you pointed out, um, Sarah, you're dumb. Through iCloud, you can turn on reminders in iCal. So, if you look at my MacBook again with an iCal here, um, sure enough, I've got my reminders view. This is something, by the way, you can toggle on and off um, in your view. I can hide reminders or show. I've chosen to show. So, that's the same reminders as you see in the reminders app? Exactly the same. <laughs> now, one thing, and I'm not really sure if this is just a isolated issue or if it's something that a lot of people have. The reminders that you see that are checked are actually completed reminders. Anybody who uh. uses the apps knows that once you check them, they go into a completed area and they kind of get off of your main screen. These haven't really gone anywhere, so I'm not really sure what the deal is. But if I just want a nice list of all of my current reminders, and they certainly are all current, um, how do I? There you go. I don't. Where do? How do I get that? I don't, it's not over. What are you I'm not, talking about? There's no, how do well, no, I? No, on your iPad, you just use the Reminders app. Oh, I see. On the desktop. On the desktop. <sighs> that's, my, my complaint was like, well, when I'm on OS ten on my laptop. Well, I'll tell you what my complaint is. What? Why do they separate them? It's what? different on the Mac as it is on iOS. That's cool. Well, it's possible. There's a way to turn it on. No, I don't. But I, I, I don't know. know. So, the, so really the issue here is uh, you just have to use a separate app. Yeah. Okay. I, ju I just want, I want access to my reminders because I can't remember anything. I'm very old um, and very senile. So, yay. Thank you, everybody. If you're old and senile, what am I? Very old. Older. Dinosaur-like. senile-er. You are like fossilized wood. I am. Yeah. What's it called again? Petrified forest. Petrified. Yeah, gosh. Fossilized. <laughs> fossilized. You know, petrified. You'd, Same thing. You'd look for those hey, by the river. Hey, you know who brings us this portion of iPad today? What? Who? <laughs> Where? You, you know, there's a big game coming up. Maybe perhaps you knew that. We got your, uh, you got your uh, NFL playoffs coming up and then that big, big game in a couple of weeks. And perhaps you're going to be... Guess who's going to the game on Sunday, by the way? You? That's right. You're kidding. How do you get tickets? This guy. How do you get tickets? Well, they were given to me. 
Wow, I'm I jealous. Just, I just got freaking lucky. That's going to be a great game. If they, Very don't, exciting. if they don't win, I'll never leave. I'll stay at Candlestick and cry for the rest of my Our life. Our 49ers are going to the playoffs. That's right. Um, so, but, uh, you know, if you're a fan, and uh, I know many of you are, and you don't want to miss the big game, but maybe perhaps you're traveling uh, or uh, you got to be at DMV, uh, not on a Sunday. Um, you got to be somewhere, a wedding. That's what <laughs> got to go to a Sunday wedding. That's what happens. Somebody's having there. a wedding during the, <laughs> you know, you know, there's like a thousand weddings planned this Sunday <laughs> and next Sunday's going to be more. So what do you do? Slingbox. You bring your iPad and your Slingbox app and you can watch your TV anywhere, any time you can get online. So here's the deal. You got to get the Slingbox for your television setup. And by the way, the Slingbox people came by at CES and the new dish DVR and many and many many more devices are going to start having Slingbox just built into them, which is awesome. Uh, and then you download the uh, Slingbox app for the iPad. I think it's thirty dollars. Now what you're watching is your home TV setup. Anything that you've connected up to your Slingbox at home, your DVR, your Blu-ray player, your DVD player, your satellite dish, your cable box, you'll be able to see control from your iPad just like this. What's also cool is if, if you control the DVR so you can, if you forget to record the game, you can set it up and press, say record this. If the game's on live, you want to watch it and it really looks great on the iPad. It turns the iPad into a personal television. Find out more at slingbox.com slash twit. It's very affordable. You will not pay extra fees of any kind, no monthly fees or anything because you've already bought your TV system. You don't have to buy it again. And you're not limited to some channels. You don't have to worry about blackouts. Whatever you can see at home, you can see on the road with Slingbox. On a Mac, on a PC, on an iPhone, an iPod Touch with Wi-Fi, a laptop, uh, tablets, Android phones, too. Slingbox. It's available at Best Buy and Amazon or go to slingbox.com slash twit to learn more. It really works just beautifully. And uh, so if you're worried, you know, you got that wedding to go to and you're worried about the big game, bring your iPad. No one will know what you're doing. No, they're not paying attention. They don't care. You're at table 10. Say, I'm designing a card for the bride and groom. <laughs> yeah. That's don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you. Yeah. But uh, you know, I don't want to show it to you right now. It's a secret. Olympics? Surprise. 2012 Olympics this summer? Got to have Slingbox. It. Slingbox on the road. Cable TV in your pocket. It is. It's, you know, I always thought that the iPad is like kind of the perfect personal television. Yeah. And Slingbox just completes it with live TV. What do you say, Leo? Time for a couple app of caps. app cap uh, awards. You know what I don't have? An app cap? What should I do? Would you like one? I would love one. <laughs> They're always over there. Now. Close your eyes, children. Close your eyes. I get to pick, huh? Uh-huh. All right. I think you'll look... Whoa. Uh, I think you'll look good in this. I'm going to do this all with my eyes closed. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I think you'll look good in this. Look at that. Uh, I'm hunting wabbits. Hey! <laughs> I'm going wabbit hunting. I love it. Uh, That's good. <laughs> Waskoy Wabbit. Hey, you look good. You uh, matchy matchy. Matchy matchy. Like you knew you were going to wear this app. I should be wearing my 49ers helmet, actually. Yeah, you should be. Where's my Niners helmet? Yeah. Niners! 49ers. Okay. So, so my app cap uh, this week is something that, uh, I don't know, this thing is weird. It's called Kino Topic. And I actually learned about it via. Instagram via Photo Jojo, whose account that I follow, and they know a lot about like cool apps and accessories for cameras. Instagram's really become about sharing this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. Very yeah. much so. So Keynote Topic is uh, well, I'm just gonna have to launch it and show it to you because it's sort of hard to explain. Um, ooh. There's Marielle putting on her makeup. So, but here's the thing. So this looks like a video, right? But it's actually oh. a still photo. Oh. But a video at the same time. People, I've seen a lot of people doing this. This this helps you do that? So look at this. Okay. Hey, I'm me. Uh, that's Whoa. creepy. Yeah, so, and people get really, like, ooh, the smoke is the only thing moving. That's sort of, that. this one's a little hard. because. How you do you do that? So the deal is, what you do is. Oh, look, cooped up. Kid disappeared. What you do is <laughs> you record. Here, I'll, I'll try to. Hmm. Let's do one. Should we do one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so I think if if I don't if I get out of my chair and you record my what happens if oh record me okay sitting in the chair yeah okay and I'll face this way but something else needs to be happening at the same time no don't you do it in two separate stages no it's all one Here, yes you do how did she see herself here's what you do okay here's what we're gonna do um 
See if my eyes will follow you. Okay. But you have to, like, do crazy stuff with your eyes. Ready? Okay, one, two, three. You only have, like, three seconds. Okay. Okay, so now, so you kind of recorded a video. Well, I did record a video. Do it again. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't work. Okay. This is really weird. I wish you guys could see what I'm seeing. Video recording stuff. I stopped. think we will, won't Okay, we? so here's the deal. So I recorded a video. So you a recorded video. a video, a yeah. three-second video of me. Yes. So it says maximum length of this video has been reached. Okay, Fine. and I didn't move. Nothing else moved. Nothing else moved. Okay. Okay, so I go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use this. It goes okay. ahead and processes the video. So it's going to make an animated GIF out of that? Kind of. What you do, yeah. I mean, essentially, yes. That's, that's what it is. So what I do is I select my anchor frame, and this is how you have the picture be stable, right? So yeah. we'll just say... That's fine. This, this okay. first one's fine. And then it removes the camera shaking, which can be helpful. Because you held it. It was kind of held. I, I okay. Was, it was a little bit shaky. And now I tapped oh. where the action is. So That's it just, where they were. It was just your eyes, right? Right there. there nothing nothing else. else moved. Okay, let's go ahead and preview. <laughs> that is creepy. So you get a sense of... That's great. If you want to put... And then you have title, description. You can send it to Facebook or Twitter or whatever. I can go ahead so and So it, make, it must make an animated GIF because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the motion. Correct. I on, think it's, it's an animated GIF. Oh, I'm getting this. What is it called? Uh, it's called uh, Kino Topic. Because, you know, people on Google Plus have been doing this, but it's taken... It's like high-end people doing this fancy stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, the, wow. the animated gifts are like really weird. I actually made one last night um, with my cat Lucy. Now, uh, this is kind of good because I had a fire that was moving. No, this is iPhone only. Now, I know this the cats stay really app. still, but she actually wasn't. She was like rolling around because she but really the, likes the but fire. But the fire. Is... Yeah, and so that was really easy to isolate. The trick is something that can be easily isolated for motion with everything right. else staying right. perfectly still. This is, uh, is it 99 cents or 199? I want to make sure I get this right. It's 199. So don't buy it unless you think that this is going to be like a fun exercise. Oh, actually I'm definitely going to use. use it. This looks really, really cool. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's like, and also with the iPad crappy camera, this, these sorts it'd of It'd be better with an iPhone. It would be better with an iPhone, but it totally works. It's oh, more the I'm gonna, novelty uh, of it. Stand back, kids. There's going to be animated gifts galore coming from Leo. Oh, great. I can't wait. <laughs> Derek Duckman says it's GIF, not GIF. I don't care. Well, how do you pronounce G-I-F-T? I... Gift. Gift. I've always, I've always said GIF. But but let's let's agree to disagree and everyone get along. We actually discussed this on Triangulation yesterday and we concluded that because it's an acronym... Yeah. Stands for graphics interchange format. So GIF. It should be GIF, not G if. Heard it here. Thank you. G graphic. President of the internet. Is that who you are? So? Yeah. Okay. So president of the if internet. I were, says so. If I weren't president of the internet, could I wear this hat? Certainly not. That's a very good point. Only the president can wear this what hat. What is the president's app cap this week? You know, it's ironic in some ways that you came up with uh, Kinetopic because I came up with Retouch. This was a Macworld. Macworld has this contest every year uh, all submitted by users and voted on by users for the best apps of the year. And this was this year's winner. The best app of the year. I'd never heard of it. It's called Retouch. You ever hear of this? No, nope, never. You were going to want it. So it, uh, they have a version for the iPhone. This is the iPad version. Uh, here, I'll take a photo. Let's let's do. I could take something from my gallery, but let me take a photo of you, Sarah Lane. Okay. Since you did that, you were so kind as to take a photo of me. Um, that's good. Perfect. God, you're gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, okay. I love know. the camera, baby. Yeah. So there's the stuff. photo. But you know, it, I love this photo. But this bag. I'm sorry. Your purse. It's Awful. just sloppy, right? So bad. So don't you want to remove it? Yes. Now, I don't, know, I don't know how this is going to work, but this is going to be very interesting. So first I pick the brush tool. By the way, they have complete videos on how to do this. Um, th it has a clone tool. It has a removal tool. It uh, has an eraser tool. But what I can do is paint with the paintbrush, paint the stuff. Whoops. Let's pick a... Okay, that's the size of the brush. Let's paint the stuff I want to remove. So I'm painting the stuff I want to remove right there. Oh, I see. It's, it's actually red over red, which is hard to see. That's why I couldn't see it. Now press play. I go, and it's going to process it. Now, it may not do very well on this. We'll see. Because it's sort of a busy... <gasps> oh, my gosh! <laughs> we can fix that with the clone tool a little bit. Let's say we but don't that... like... Wow! Let's say we don't like this clock, okay? Yeah. That shouldn't be there. That's not... No, it's horrible. It's horrible. I don't need to know what time it All is. All right, let's get it's rid of that clock. Thing. Watch this. Very archaic. Gone. Wow! And so then you go in and finesse it. <laughs> you could finesse it a little bit. They have a retouch tool. In this case, I'd use the clone tool, and I'd uh, touch right here to say that's the, what I want to clone. 
Uh, let's, That's so. And cool. then I could I could then draw over it and make it kind of get better. Yeah. So this is this is depends on what some it works better in some cases and not so well in other cases. Let's say I don't like that zipper. Well. It's annoying. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, I'll just say I don't like that. Just for some reason, I don't like so that. So this is like, think if you were gone. Yeah. Wow. That's, <laughs> that it is It works awesome. best in a case like that where you have a solid background. A little something. And so, because it's it was hard for harder for it to do this because you could see it didn't know. Well, what should I put behind there? Right. Right. So it's a little it's harder. Pulling from the information it has around it there. It uses the information around it. The clock it did a pretty good job and with a little cleanup. Although I'll tell you. You know, if you didn't know that I'd removed that clock, you probably wouldn't have seen the no, clock. No, you don't even notice it. Let's say we don't like your nose. Well, I don't. Yeah, I know. It gets bigger the older I get. Although that's kind of cute. Yeah. Look at that. Like a little All right, let's say no time. nose. That's how they made uh, Voldemort. Much better, <laughs> I have to say. This is called Retouch. You can then save the uh, the picture back out to your library or uh, share the image. It also has uh, it has some other tools. It has like a lasso tool and stuff like that. Uh, makes it easier, you know, if I wanted to remove the hat. This is great. Isn't it? It's, 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 what's, what's amazing is how well it works. There are situations so often when it, there's a picture that's beautiful, but there's just a little something in the background, and I go, eh, just forget it. I'm not going to go into Photoshop and try to... And I can undo I everything. Know, let's let's put everything back. And, uh, uh, the original picture that, as we're it back was. To the original. But uh, let's say we don't like the dots uh, on this bridge. We don't want... No, no, we don't want any dots there. This should do a pretty good job. Of getting yeah, because it's all sort of one color. Yeah, it's all one color. Dots are gone. Whoops, we got a little bit of... I picked that up. <laughs> from the so you have, to, you have to be sure of... How, how close you are to a different color. Oops, and it crashed. And it crashed. So there you go. That's called Retouch. Oh, that's it great. is uh, 99 cents, which is a good deal. They have a yeah, iPhone app as well. This is Retouch HD. And uh, I think it actually does... You know, the thing is, it's good to have... You should just have it on your iPad mm -hmm. or your iPhone. If for, come for times, handy. occasionally you'll see something, you just, I ah, this is a great picture. If it only didn't have that little thing on yeah. there. Yeah. And you could do this Someone's in Photoshop, but not nearly so easily. And it's really kind of kind of amazing what uh, it does. And not nearly so cheaply. One dollar to get rid of stuff easily. Yeah. I love it. want to remind yeah. everybody that you can email us, iPadday at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail, 757-504-IPAD, or send us a video like Jason, a.k.a. F and Dunn, in the chat room. <laughs> Uh, sent us, which was very well done, Jason. Yes, it was. You were very good. Uh, but we've come to the end of our show, Leo. That Sorry. is it for this episode of iPad Today. Come back next uh, next week, next Thursday, and we'll do it again. 2.30. Is it 2.30 or 1.30? Oh, you know what? Next week is a yeah. special week. We're going to be at Macworld Expo. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 12.30, right. I think 12.30 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern. We'll start recording. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we will wander the floor just as we did at CES. And, and Macworld last year. And Macworld last year. So if you're going to be at Macworld Expo, come by and say hi. Please come and say hi. We'd Show us all your you. cool apps. And Thursday evening at 6 p.m. at the Intercontinental, we're having a meet and greet, a meet yeah. up. Sarah will be there. I'll be there. A lot of the Twit people will be there. So just mm -hmm. come by. It's a op you know, not an open bar. We didn't, we're not paying for drinks or anything. But come. Is that what, op what does open bar mean? It's a cash bar, meaning it's cash we're not bar. paying for your drinks. It's not an open bar. <laughs> when you say open bar, people are going to expect Open something. bar means we pay for them, right? right? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Come up and the say this. The bar is open. Come up and say the secret word, Sarah's nose, and I'll buy you a drink. Yes. Okay? How about that? Uh, Just Sarah's don't, nose. don't tell your friends. Do please. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're going to play ourselves out with the iPad star of the week, Buddy the Pitbull from Trabuca Canyon, California, playing Pinata Fiesta, a game for cats. Ow! Ow! <laughs> yum, yum, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I, I, I think it. I'll see I if I, there's some food there. How do I get in let there? Let me give it all a rotate. How do I get in there? something underneath it, but it's got glass on top I'm of buddy. it. I'll th throw this iPad <laughs> through the second. window, see if give I can get minute. at that french fry. I want it. I want it now. Give me yeah, a it's good. I'm going to do I'm it. I'm going to eat it. Oh, I got it. <laughs>